Good morning, or probably this afternoon by the time you see this. It's August 27th, Thursday, and we are looking at Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22, verses 1 through 14, which is the parable of the wedding banquet. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened calf have been butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business, the rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burnt their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out to the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. And verse 14, for many are invited, but few are chosen, sums up how Jesus looks at the current situation as he faces Jerusalem, as he faces the cross, as he gets ready to give his life as a sacrifice for many. And this, is, this parable is very similar to the watchtower and the parable of the tenants who killed the uh, servants and then killed the son. But in those days, when a wedding was held, they gave an invitation, very much like our days, you receive a card in the mail, invitation, wedding of so-and-so on such-and-such -such a day. Please come, please RSVP. But they, in those times, they also sent out a second invitation. So the first invitation was sent out to let people know the wedding was coming. And we saw that with the prophets, we saw that with the priests, we saw that in the Old Testament. And we saw that with Jesus' ministry on earth. But then a second invitation was given when the food was, was ready, when everything was prepared and it was time to come, they sent out a second invitation. And that's what we see here, the fatted ox, the, the cattle have been butchered. So you got ribs, you got steaks, you got hamburgers, you got everything ready to go that's necessary for a feast, for a wedding banquet. But in verse 5 it says they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, one to another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. And of course, the king was angry. The king represents God. He's done everything that he could to invite these people, to make it pleasurable, to make it easy for them. And they mistreated and killed his servants. And so verse 7 says, The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. That's us. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. That's, you know, it's interesting the bad as well as the good were invited. 
And again, that's just a reminder that's all of us. And the banquet hall was filled. But when the king came in to see his guests, he noticed that the, a man there that was not wearing wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. See, in those days, not only did the person putting on the banquet provide everything that was needed, they also provide a set of wedding clothes, of nice clothes and, and things to wear. And all you had to do was put them on in order to stay in the banquet. But, and to refuse to wear them was unthinkable. But this guest thought he did not need to wear the clothes. And there's a lot of people out there that think, oh, I don't need what the Bible says. I don't need Jesus. I don't need to follow the things that God has been trying to teach us. But yes, you do. If you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, yes, you do need to follow what God, what Jesus has been telling us. And, and God has given us so many invitations to come to him, to follow him, to worship him. He did it in the Old Testament through the prophets. He did it when Jesus walked on the earth here. Jesus lived an example. He gave invitation after invitation. And then we also have the, the New Testament, the written word of God, which gives us the invitation again. And God has given us so many invitations. And so in verse 13, it says, The king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot, and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is Jesus' description of hell. It is real. It's not a myth. It's not something that people made up to scare people. It is real. And we have a choice. We have a choice of heaven. Or we have a choice of hell. And we make, the, we make the choice by how we respond to the invitation. And it's a picture of the righteousness that God provides to us through Jesus. See, this gets us into God's kingdom. And Jesus represents the clothes that is provided for everyone. But believers must put them on. We must wear them in order to enter the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. All are invited. But we must be ready to enter. And then verse 14 is a final warning for everybody who reads these words. For many are invited, but few are chosen. All the preparations have been made. We just need to accept them. We need to accept Jesus. We should not follow that man who was thrown out as an example of disobedience because it's not going to get you into the kingdom of heaven. It's not going to get you anywhere except for some place you don't want to go. So accept the invitation, follow Jesus, obey his word. God has a banquet, a feast prepared for us. Have a great day. Talk to you later.